Welcome back to Real Estate School. Today, we will be taking the trick out of Tricky Questions Math Edition. As we stated in a previous Take the Trick Out of Tricky Questions video, no real estate school is able to supply you with the exact questions you'll see on your licensing exam. Some questions you may breeze right through, others may be a bit tricky. Hopefully, with this video, we can take some of the trick out of the tricky questions you might come across. So let's get started. Question number one. A sales transaction closes on July 4th. The day of the closing belongs to the seller. On January 1st, the seller paid a hazard insurance premium of $375 for the year. According to the 12-month, 30-day method, what should appear on the closing statement? A. A debit to the buyer and a credit to the seller for $191.67. B. A debit to the buyer and a credit to the seller for $183.33. C. A credit to the buyer and a debit to the seller for $183.33. Or D. A credit to the buyer and a debit to the seller for $191.67. The answer is B. A debit to the buyer and a credit to the seller for $183.33. The 360-day method assumes that every month is 30 days. The daily proration is therefore $375 divided by 360 days for a daily amount. The closing occurs on the 184th day of the year, six months through June, for a total of 180 days and four days of July, 184 days. Thus, the seller share is the daily amount times the 184 days, and we get $191.67. The buyer share is the $375 total minus the $191.67 seller share, or $183.33. So on the closing statement, debit the buyer and credit the seller $183.33. Question number two. Jenny has an interest-only loan at an annual interest rate of 6%. If her monthly payment is $1,875, how much is the loan's principal balance? A. $337,500. B. $375,000, C, $91,750, or D, $214,500? The answer is B, $375,000. The equation for the loan amount is annual interest divided by the interest rate equals the loan amount. Thus, $1,875 times 12 months divided by 0 0.06, the rate of interest, equals 375,000. Question number three. Andre owned a one-quarter acre lot. He wanted to construct a 120 by 80 tennis court on the lot. What approximate percentage of the lot will be left over, if any, when he's completed the construction? A, 12%. B, 88%, C, 3%, or D, 15%? The answer would be A, 12%. The lot measures 43,560, that's one acre, divided by four, or 10,890 square feet. The tennis court will take up 9,600 square feet, leaving 1,290 square feet. This amount is 11.8% of the total lot area. 1,290 divided by 10,890 equals 11.8, which we've rounded to 12%. 
Here's a good way to remember an acre of land. Four old ladies driving 35 in a 60. Question number four. A borrower pays $9,000 for points on a $300,000 loan. How many points was she charged by the lender? A. Nine points. B. Point nine. C. Three. Or D. Thirty. The answer would be C. Three points. The 9000 she paid for points divided by the $300,000 loan amount equals 0.03 or 3%. This is three points since one point is 0.01 or 1%. Question number five. A seller just wants to break even on her property sale where she's invested $80,000. The market value is $520,000. Her mortgage is four hundred thousand. Closing costs are running four thousand, and the commission will be seven percent. Will she get her money back, and by how much? A. Yes, she will make it with four hundred dollars to spare. B. No, she will be short by forty-four hundred dollars. C. No, she will be four hundred dollars short. D. Yes. She will make it by $4,400. The answer would be C. No, she'll be $400 short. Here, the seller needs to net $80,000. The seller's net equals the sales price minus commissions, closing costs, and the loan balance. The commission is Five hundred and twenty thousand sales price times point oh seven seven percent equals thirty six thousand four hundred dollars. Thus, the net will be five hundred and twenty thousand minus thirty six thousand four hundred in commission, four thousand in closing cost, minus the four hundred thousand dollar loan balance equals seventy nine thousand six hundred. She was four hundred dollars short. Question number six. Buyer Jim wants to make a 91% offer on a property priced at $430,000. What should Jim offer? Round your answer to the nearest hundredths. A. $472,500. B. $391,300. C. $468,800. D. $430,000. The correct answer is B, $391,300. Our math will be the 430,000 times 0.91, which is 91%, equals $391,300. Let's put this on the T-bar. We know the rate and the total. Let's find the part. Our T-bar says to multiply 91% times 430,000 equals $391,300. If you would like more information on utilizing the T-bar method in real estate math, check out our video entitled, Take the Fear Out of Real Estate Math. Simplify with the T-bar math method. Question number seven. Comparable A on a CMA has one more bedroom and one more bath than the subject. However, it has 400 square foot less living area. If the comp sold for $1 million and bedrooms are valued at $50,000, the bathrooms at $25,000, and living area at $30,000, what is the indicated value of the subject? A. $1,045,000. B. 995,000. C, 985,000. Or D, 955,000. The answer would be D, 955,000. Start with the $1 million sales price. Subtract out 50,000 and 25,000 for the bedroom and bath respectively. Then add 30000 to adjust for living area. 
Total adjustments come to 45000 which is subtracted from the comparable. Thus, $1 million sales price minus 45000 in adjustments, we now have a value of $955,000. Question number eight. A borrower earns $6,000 per month and makes credit card and car note payments of $1,000. A conventional lender requires 27% income ratio. What monthly amount for housing expenses, principal interest taxes and insurance, will the lender allow this person to have in order to qualify for a conventional mortgage loan? A. $1,620 B. $1,350 C. $1,946 Or D. $2,080 the answer is A, $1,620. The income ratio is equal to monthly housing expense divided by the monthly gross income. To identify what the lender will allow, plug in the known and applicable numbers and solve. 27% equals X times 6,000. Note that the $1,000 does not apply to income ratio, only to the debt ratio. Thus, $6,000 times 27% equals $1,620. Let's utilize the T-bar with this problem. We know the rate is 27% and the whole or total is $6,000. let us plug those numbers in our T-bar and our T-bar tells us to multiply. Question number nine. A property is expected to appreciate 6% per year. It was purchased for $375,000. What will its value be in three years on a compounded basis? A. $442,500 B. $421,350 C. $464,496 Or D. $446,631 The answer is D, $446,631. Let's break this problem down in steps. We know to appreciate we add, we take the 6% and add it to the 100% or 1 plus 0 0.06 and we get 1.06. The 1 represents 100%. We now know for one year the property is worth 106% of what it used to be. We then multiply. The appreciation value for one year would be 375,000 times 1.06 or 397,500 dollars. However, the question is asking for the value in three years on a compounded basis. This would be 375,000 times 1.06 three times or 375 times 1.06 times 1.06 times 1.06. The answer we are looking for is $446,631. Question number 10. Seller Andy requires a 3.5% deposit on all offers. Buyer Josh wants to offer $312,000 for the property. The property was appraised at $325,000. What must the earnest money deposit be if Josh presents his current offer? A. $10,920 B. $11,373 C. $9,500 or D. $10,530 The answer is A. $10,920 In this question, ignore the appraisal value. It's there for a distractor. To find the earnest money amount, multiply the offer, 312000 by the percent required by the seller, 3.5%, and that would equal $10,920.